What is up, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of the group meeting here at fanboysanonymous.com. And if you don't know what this is, well, let me put it to you simple here. We took a bunch of the fanboys that we have here. We're going to take one basic topic, break it down into a lot of other topics, and just have a roundtable discussion about everything on our minds. Pretty simple podcast, but we're going to get into the nitty-gritty on the DC film universe here. And we're going to make it much, much more complicated than it needs to be, I'm sure. I'm your host for this evening's festivities, Tony Mango, the founder of Fanboys Anonymous. And with me on this podcast panel, we have the Dace Man, Chris Dace. Hey, 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 Dace Tackle Nation. How's it going? We have Orion Pettitclair. What's up? Sam Lassio. Rock and roll. And joining us a little bit later on will be Nikki Mills. She's going to be the Wonder Woman of this podcast, which it means <laughs> that she's going to feel slightly uh, out of place, but we'll in- welcome her to it anyway. <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to break this up into multiple different categories and split the video, if you're watching this on YouTube, into those categories. If you're watching it, or rather I should say listening to it, on Stitcher or on iTunes, just one giant file, but you'll get the same thing, uh, so don't worry about that. But subscribe to the YouTube one anyway, by the way. YouTube.com slash fanboys and on. What we're going to be talking about first up is Superman versus Batman. Then we're going to roll along to Wonder Woman. We're going to, in third part, talk about The Flash and Green Lantern. Then the inclusion of the offshoot characters, comparisons to the Avengers uh, film franchise. And we're going to lastly finish this off with our ideas of the plans for the sequel solo films and the Justice League film and the sequels to that. So, now that we got that out of the way, first main topic here, um, umbrella topic, I should say, for everything that we're going to talk about in regards to just this one film, Superman versus Batman. Uh, I'm going to go around the panel here. What do you think the title should be? A couple things that have been thrown out there as potentials that they might be calling it are as follows and these all have man of steel before it so this is like that uh the subheading kind of a thing battle the night spelled with a k black of night spelled with a k beyond darkness darkness falls night falls spelled with a k again shadow of the night with no k because why not right the blackest hour and the darkness within And what's also been rumors that they would just call it World's Finest or Public Enemies or the whole Superman versus Batman, Batman versus Superman, so on and so forth. So just going in the same order here, Dace, what do you think the title should be for this movie? We don't even have a title yet. I'm okay with the Superman versus Batman, but judging on the storyline that it sounds like they're going to, I would just simply call it The Dark Knight Returns. Only for the fact that it sounds like Superman is the man on the scene for this film franchise it's ahead of the chris nolan era and technically batfleck is going to be the one who's returning to confront uh superman so to me the dark knight returns is more of a proper fitting you don't think that that would confuse fans by thinking that it's the same continuity as the christian bale ones i think it would be great for warner brothers to get more money Hmm. because it would confuse them to come out and see it like, oh, no, another Dark Knight movie. I'm going. It's perfect, because we like things that are overhyped. <laughs> they get pissed off when they all go to see it, and they're like, wait, who's this guy as Batman? I don't yeah. remember Bane being in this. <laughs> yeah, they're already mad as it is. Just piss them off some more. Get some more money. <laughs> Orion, right, what do you think it should be called? It should be called Man of Steel 2 Batman. Pretty simple title. Why not, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just going to be about Batman anyways. Sam, what do you think? I would, if you're going to do the Man of Steel thing before it, I would either say Man of Steel, Public Enemies, or just call it World's Finest. I got to go with, you can't do Man of Steel. That's just going to seem really odd. And I know that it's kind of supposed to be a sequel to it, but it really isn't. I mean, it's more so just like Justice League Zero or something. It's a prequel yeah. to Justice League more than it is a sequel to Man of Steel. So I don't think Which you do any Man of Steel whatsoever in it. Can I, I go that, again? Yeah, you that can. really worries me because I felt the exact same way about Iron Man 2, that it wasn't really an Iron Man sequel. It just felt like, let's set up 
Avengers as best we can before it happens. Uh, before I get to Ryan's uh, uh, second opinion on that, um, I kind of disagree with that. I think Iron Man 2 felt like an Iron Man sequel. It just um, had a weird placement. They shouldn't have done Iron Man 2. They should have done a S.H.I.E.L.D. movie in that place. And they should have done Iron Man 2 as the first thing after Avengers, I think. But then again, that's a whole Marvel thing. We're going into DC. But I think that that would be yeah. the difference between whether or not to justify Iron Man 2 or Man of Steel 2 kind of thing. But what do you think, Orion? I think if they want to keep Man of Steel, it should be Man of Steel 2, Man of Steel versus Man of Bat. Well, they would keep the Man of Steel 2 part? Because they could just do Man of yeah. Steel versus... Yeah. No, no, no. It, we have to have Man of Steel twice to offset the awesomeness of Man of Bat. <laughs> <laughs> I would just go with either Superman and Batman, not necessarily versus, or Superman versus Batman, or if they need something else and they don't want to go call it Superman and Batman, you got to go Superman and Batman colon public enemies. Um, I don't really think that they should influence the public enemies thing 100%, the storyline itself, but I like the idea of both Superman and Batman being outcasts in this movie, and eventually that they need to sort of work their way into the Justice League where they're, you know, the public uh, figures. So if they take the idea that Superman is not 100% viewed as like that god that we can trust where they they implied a little bit of that at the end of the movie but the yeah. more that somebody like luthor can show the footage if he has access to the footage of superman killing zod it'll be like well what do you agree with was that a good idea or was that a bad one and then you kind of have like that republican versus democrat argue in the movie and then batman he can be a public enemy just in the fact that he's fucking batman like they can still go with the idea that he's a mysterious legend and the cops aren't into him yet and all this other kind of stuff. I don't like the idea that Batman's been a veteran of this for years and years and years, but I do like that he's been around longer because Batman should yeah. be long around longer. Like he should be the guy that when he's talking to Superman, he goes, yeah, you might be the more powerful one, but motherfucker, I've been doing this for, you know, a couple of years now kneel before batman fucking instead of kneel before zod like i think a good honorable mention for a title should be man of steel 2 runaway train and they should play uh soul asylum in the background because this project seems to be getting away from them <laughs> they're gonna change it though it's gonna be sung by arkham asylum <laughs> specific rights to the movie yeah uh, my my only fear with the title of it having batman in it or implying batman in the title is only because I don't know the extent to which Wonder Woman plays a role in this film. Is she going to be in it as much as the other two? Is she, like, towards the end, she pops up? Like, I don't know. So, like, they, they say Batman versus Superman, but now you've got this third wheel that kind of stuck on there. Mm -hmm. So if you call it, like, Batman, Superman, da 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 well, what about Wonder Woman? But then if you call it, like, public enemies, then you could just say, well, maybe Wonder Woman's a public enemy. They see her as a foreigner that they don't understand. If you do um, World's Finest, that she's still able to be under that umbrella of World's Finest. But if you mention Batman's name in a Man of Steel, like Man of Steel 2, Batman vs. Superman, or just Batman vs. Superman, something like that, then it's almost like excluding the third character they brought into this. From my understanding, which of course, you, you know, these details can be completely falsified or whatever, I think she only plays a really, like, small bit part. And I don't think that she's actually Wonder Woman in it. The one rumor that I had heard that seemed to have a little bit of validity to it, to me, was um, Wonder Woman would be posing as an investor of something, some kind of like an artifact or whatever that the Wayne Foundation is tied to. And she would almost kind of be like this background figure that at the end it would be like, oh, and she's Wonder Woman. And that would be like the introduction to her, sort of. I mean, we're going to talk about so, um, different ways she's to introduce... Be like, what was that? Uh, so she's going to basically just be Diana Prince to the whole thing? Right, yeah. So oh. she, if she isn't Wonder Woman, then they don't need to factor her into the title. But we're going to talk about Wonder Woman when we get uh, to the next part here. Um, Title-wise, though, I do agree with you. If she does have a big part, then that's going to be awkward. Um, 
one other thing with the title though that has to do with the logo about it because obviously they haven't shown a logo for the movie yet other than just the bat logo and the superman one i personally don't like that bat one by the way i don't know if anybody else likes that does anybody like that that bat is god awful it's too I fat of it. yeah it was too thick too blocky too geometric basically what do you think about that orion do you like that um well from last i haven't looked at it in a while but it kind of reminded me something along the lines of you know the dark knight returns that bat symbol sort of which was kind of okay i guess i mean it's classic I always like the sharper ones, like more points to it and stuff. I don't know if they could really necessarily do that, especially about, to incorporate the Superman logo into it. But how about they bring back the 1989 Batman bat symbol? I love that symbol. I do like the newer one, but I have, I gotta say that 18 uh, 1989 one's a lot better. I think overall. Yeah. But that'll depend on the name of the movie too, because if they call it something as simple as like world's finest and they don't have batman or superman in the title they need to really drive home that logo so people know what the hell it is right and if they just call it superman and batman i mean they could have a standard captain america type of thing in the background or something like that and get away with it of course they're going to incorporate the logos but you know um let's go to one of the other huge huge topics about this this is a you know a long time waiting we talked about it on the website itself, but never had a chance to talk about it on a podcast, uh, really. There is one uh, mention of uh, an episode of Geek Speak where some of the members had talked about it, but let's get this out of the way while we're at it. Batfleck. Uh, the quote that I like that I've been hearing a lot lately, even on a commercial for some new TV show called Sirens, is, oh, don't worry, he's going to crush it. And the more that uh, I think on this, and the more time that I dwell on different Batman things, I'm actually really liking this casting. And all of those fears that I had at first when it was like, what, fucking Ben Affleck? No, this has to be a joke. It's the same thing that happened with Daniel Craig for James Bond, where I was just like, this dude's fucking not Bond. He, he's got blonde hair, and he looks like he's 50, and... No, this can't happen. And then Daniel Craig turned out to actually know and understand the character really well. Ben Affleck, and I didn't know this before, I don't know if anybody else knew this, the only reason he really did Daredevil was because at that time he had the mentality of, well, they're not going to do another Batman one, so this is the closest that I can get. And on um, Kevin Smith's podcast, Fat Man on Batman, he was talking about it because he and Kevin uh, Smith are friends. Ben Affleck, I mean... He was talking about how his house is the one that he um, he bought from Ben Affleck. And there's this section of the house that Affleck had always referred to as the Batcave. Like, he is a huge Batman fan. So, if he's going into this as a huge Batman fan, he's got to have some kind of an emotional tie to the character where he doesn't want to see it get messed up. So, I don't think we have to worry about any bat nipples. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about him, uh, you know, playing up the character in a weird way. So I think Ben Affleck, you know, he could be a damn good Batman. What do you think about it, Dace? I think it's the same reaction that all fanboys will have initially. Uh, everybody was up in arms about Heath Ledger. Everybody was up in arms about Chris Evans and Hathaway. Anytime they make this announcement of one of our childhood heroes and we it's not who we want it to be, we get all defensive. And like you said, I, I really think he is going to be committed to it. And I think the backlash that comes to a person of this uh, – causes them to work harder and do more research and don't just lackadaisically be like, oh, well, I'm now Batman. And they come out and act like, I don't know, Green Lantern or something. But more or less, I think he, he, Ben Affleck has proven himself as an actor. He has proven himself as a director. And he is also, as we can tell, committed to the Batman role. And I think just the haters are going to hate and he'll, he'll do a hell of a job with it. What do you think, Ryan? Well, I mean, I think the same thing, but, you know, I got to have Matt Damon as Robin. <laughs> I actually really like the idea of Matt Damon playing Barry Allen. I don't know. There's something about that that I think works out, but he can't be, he can't be Robin. <laughs> I, I think he'd be a good uh, 
Hal Jordan if they do go with that Green Lantern. Only for the fact that I think Ben Affleck and Matt Damon can fight really well on screen when they argue and bicker, and it'd be hilarious. That would be the one scene where the Boston accent comes through. Yeah. <laughs> Just like acting like brothers and stuff. Sam, what do you think about Batflick? Are you on board, or uh, do you think it's retarded? Uh, <laughs> uh, I was, like everyone else, I was apprehensive at first. But you know what? Like everyone else has said, he's definitely proven himself as an actor. Yeah, ev- all actors have. You, you can name a couple of shitty movies they've done. I, I can't hold um, Daredevil against Affleck. I no. mean, if there was a lot of problems with that movie, he wasn't really one of them. Um. Things like Geely, I'm not going to question his acting styles in that as far as Batman goes. But he's definitely a great director. He loves Batman. I would love to see him direct a uh, either solo Batman film or even the Justice League. I think that would be really cool. And yeah, I mean, what else can you say that you guys haven't said? I mean, he definitely loves the character. And we all we all have characters that we love. And if we got the chance to play that character... There's no way in hell we would want to mess that up. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to go reverse mode here. What do you think about Jeremy Irons? Do you think that that's as freaking awesome as I do for Alfred? I mean, you got fucking Scar as Alfred. I mean, that's <laughs> going to be really cool. There's going to be a scene in the movie where he kills Batman, and it turns out to be this whole big plot. <laughs> I kill Thomas Wayne and then drops him from a building or something. <laughs> Ryan, what do you think about Alfred? Is it good that he's in the movie? Do you think that Jeremy Irons is the right man for the role, or um, is that kind of a surprise? Well, um, unfortunately, outside of him voice acting Scar, I honestly don't know the actor that well. I don't know. I mean, I might have seen him in other movies, but I wouldn't remember just based on his name. Um, But sure, I mean, you can bring pretty much... I, I mean... I liked the last actor who played uh, Alfred. I for, I terrible with names, but you know, in the Dark Knight trilogy, Michael I like yeah, Michael Caine. I liked him as Alfred. Um, I don't know how it's gonna do with a almost younger Alfred, because this guy's like significantly younger than Michael Caine, obviously. So we'll see how that works out. Um, but I'm excited to see how they redo Alfred in this respect. He might not actually be that much younger. He might only be like maybe a year or two younger. Oh well, I might have been looking at the wrong photos then. Yeah, I think he just ages a little bit better. <laughs> Which that's actually one of the things they incorporated into the character over the years. I mean, um, it used to be that Alfred was just this old, you know, crotchety kind of guy, but they've gotten into a point now where his backstory is more so that he was a member of the uh, British intelligence. And he can kick some ass, too. You know what? You're actually, you are right. Jeremy Irons is 65. Michael Caine is 80. Yeah, but just one or two years. Yeah. <laughs> well, he looks pretty good for his age. So I just see that. You know, you know, the whole thing you brought up about how Alfred in the comics has been, you know, better aged now with all of his background and stuff just reminds me of uh, how Aunt May used to be this old crotchety looking woman, you know about to be on her deathbed or something, and now you look at her in the comics like, she really aged well. Yeah. Even in the uh, Spider-Man cartoon, she's like 40. Ugh, <laughs> not, the, not the cartoon. Well, that's terrible, but... Dace, what do you think about Jeremy Irons? It, it, it's tough. I, I like him as an actor, and everything I've seen him in, he's been a very dominant, intelligent uh, role. I think Jeremy Irons, Irons is a Alfred would be better suited for the Gordon television that's coming to Fox because I I know they're going the direction of Batman year one and it's a younger Bruce Wayne. So he could be the dominant father figure in it. I think in a movie with uh, Batman, Superman, woman, wonder woman, and possibly others, uh, he's going to get lost in that trend, like that, that group. And he's too strong of a uh, person and an actor to actually play out. I think they needed a more of a older, wiser, background character rather than uh, someone like Jeremy who is steals the, the friggin scene every time he's in it anyway you think that maybe they purposely locked him into a bunch of different movies and when we get a solo Batman film that'll be his time to shine I do it, it's it's weird though because like I said 
Uh, him playing Alfred and Batman is supposed to be a little bit older. It, it doesn't make sense. If Batman was younger, like the Christ- basically if Jeremy was in The Dark Knight Rises where uh, Christian Bale kept trying to go fight Bane, I would believe Jeremy telling him, no, look, you're an idiot. Stop it. More so than Michael Caine because Michael Caine has, a, I would say, a softer side to him, whereas Jeremy is more of a forceful, that ex-Marine secret intelligent background that we would want to see. And I think being with Bat Batfleck being aged a little bit, it'd be tough. Hmm. Good points. You know, though, uh, the way that I see it, I'm knowing that he's going to be Alfred. I imagine that somewhere in the movie, they're going to give him maybe not like a speech, like this whole monologue, but probably this motivational piece where maybe Batman doesn't want to join Superman, doesn't want to, combine and like face this other threat of Luthor or whatever Luthor decides to do in the film. And I imagine Alfred as giving him this pep talk almost like, you know what? You were the Batman. I didn't support it at first, but you made it your own and I'm proud of you for what you were able to do for Gotham. But now you have to come out of retirement. You faced your villains of the past, but now there's a new villain. There's new heroes and you need to step up as one of them. I'm actually hoping there's a variation to that. I hope that they don't say that um, Batman was retired. I hope he's just like, maybe, depending on when they set the film to happen, I would like for him to be a two or three year veteran in front of Superman. Um, Superman comes on the scene and he starts the whole thing with the invasion of Zod and all that. Maybe two years Batman's been doing it since then. And that's why he's like a little bit um, still inexperienced. He's not somebody who's been doing it for 10 years and they still don't know who Batman is. And he's already fought all of his villains and all that. I don't like the idea of him being a retired Batman. I never liked the idea of Batman retiring, period. But um, yeah. I kind of was hoping that something similar would happen that we, you said that I think Alfred is going to be that character that Batman can talk to throughout the movie because otherwise he's not going to be talking to Clark Kent or uh, Lois or anybody else. He needs somebody to talk to. And I could see that being the main Jeremy Iron scene where he's just like, all right, I'm going to chew the scenery here. This is my, my Alfred scene where I get to tell you to let it go. And Hey, you, you know, Batman is fine with Alfred. Why can't Batman be fine with Superman? And then he just goes like, ah, Fuck you, old man. You're right. Like, <laughs> one thing I'm not on board with, though, is another huge thing. Uh, in the total opposite of the Ben Affleck thing, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. I don't like it. I will explain it a little bit later. I want to get your opinions first, but I've got two main things that bother me about it. Dace, what do you think about Eisenberg? I think he's a little too young. Uh, I know he did a good job in the Social Network movie, but Zuckerberg was young. and That, that fit Eisenberg, and he did a great job at it. I feel like Lex needs to be someone who's been in the business for a while, who's ruthless. And they established in Man of Steel that LexCorp is actually... It, it, it's huge already. There's already like things going around. So to me, that's a middle-aged... Like, that's a man in his 30s or older. That's the only problem I have with it. I think he's an excellent actor. I think he could be a great Lex for like maybe an Arrow stint or a Flash stint or even a uh, Gordon, uh, a younger version of Lex. But I don't, I can't see it for where I think they're going to be going with this movie. Ryan? Well, I mean, for me, it's getting past, uh, getting past his normal character tropes. You know how. He tends to be very cocky in all the movies I've seen him in, and even in like um, he was in a recent episode of Modern Family, and he's had the same kind of character. He, I, I mean, like he's like I said, he has the same character throughout each film and television se- series I've seen him in, and it's getting past that part. But otherwise, I think he's on. He's basically almost at the same point as. Uh, Batfleck where people may be underestimating him uh, but for me it's just going to have to be he can't be playing the same character he's been playing Sam are you on board with it? You know 
I think I am. I don't know enough about him as far as an actor as is he typecast? Where do they have all these characters that are essentially the same and they cast him in the role? Or does he play the same character in every role that he's in? I don't know if it's a problem with flexibility, like he can't get past that same character he always does, or if they just put him in that role. Also, the, he, does look, he does look young, I will give you that. He's technically the same age as Henry Cavill, just Henry Cavill looks like he's five years older, and he looks like he's five years younger. <laughs> the, the thing that I've heard, though, and I, I don't know how true this is, but they're saying that this Lex is supposed to be like a grew up on the street, has like a lot of street smarts and book smarts. Is he's very, he's a phys- he fought a lot while he was a kid, and now that he's older, he's built up this company, and it blew up. It just it exploded into a billion dollar company. So I don't really know. I honestly too much about the backstory of Lex Luthor. The only backstory I've ever seen of him came from Smallville, where his father was the head of the company and he adopted it. So I don't know if if him being like from a poorer background creating LexCorp is too far away from the character. I don't know about that. But I can see it from based on what he did in the social network. He was cocky. He had this sneer to him where he knew he was better than you. And I think he can bring that to Lex. He has, it, he was in, um, I didn't see the movie, but I've seen a lot of trailers and stuff for it and some clips. The, the, the magician one, what was it called? Um, now you, now you see me. Now you see me. That was it. He, from what I saw in that, he was older looking than I'd seen him in any of the other movies he was in. So as far as him looking young, I mean, they they definitely got to shave his head. I, I got to say that. I was on the fence about it sometimes. Like, what could they do? He's got to be bald. He has to be. And I don't, I don't know if he's going to look older being bald. He's going to look younger being bald. I, I just – I can't say. But from some of just the fan art of making him look like Lex Luthor, I think he, he's got the look down. And I think he can bring that social network cockiness two legs and that's another thing too will they make him bald i think they have I, I to don't see how they can. one of the things that bothers me about this is i could see them not making him bald and that's something that really annoys me because i'm so tired of lex not being lex in these movies mm-hmm. we've had two different people play lex so far and they still weren't able to give him the proper magnitude that he should. For Lex the, was a bump idiot in all the other films. Totally. He was a joke. And not only did he not represent a good enough threat when it comes to the storyline itself with their ideas of like, oh, let's have him try to figure out how to get fucking real estate. And he's going to, you know, prance around like a, an idiot and have to have wigs on because it's like, wouldn't yeah. it be funny if the bald guy had wigs? Ha ha ha! I get I, it. I like, don't. I don't remember where I heard it, but he is basically a glorified land baron. Right. It's really a shame because the character is so rich with possibilities. Um, for those who aren't too familiar with it, this is a quick rundown. He's had a bunch of different backstories over the years, so of course it's kind of like certain elements carry over, certain uh, ones don't, but. Originally, he just started off as a mad scientist character. There's just a bald scientist guy that it was just like, oh, okay, well, he's a you know a generic scientist that's got something weird fighting Superman. But they got to a point where his accepted kind of backstory was that Lex pretty much built this company by himself, and he's incredibly proud of it, and he's a total egomaniac, where everything in his life so far, other than the fact that he's bald, has been triumph lex luther is basically like the perfect type of person that you would want to be when you aspire to be like what hollywood kind of broadcasts he is an attractive guy he is muscular he's strong he's incredibly intelligent one of the most intelligent men in the entire planet um he's one of the richest men in the entire planet he's well-spoken everything is admirable about him 
except behind that Hollywood image, he is just a maniac because he's not insane. And that's what gives him a little bit of an edge. He's perfectly sane. He's just power hungry and he's a dick and he will do anything he can do to succeed. And his ego is mainly the thing that gets him in the way with Superman because he looks at Superman as the one guy who is viewed as better than him. And for somebody like a Jesse Eisenberg, I get that they can show that. But at the same time, I think they're going to show in the wrong way. They're going to show him as being a spoiled brat who is, yeah, he might be the same age as Henry Cavill, but he doesn't have the same physical appearance. So he's going to look in comparison like a spoiled little kid who has a problem with an adult authority figure. And I don't want them to make this the social network where Lex Luthor is this kid who happened to just be a brilliant guy who... um, Kind of the mentality of, like, these people that get on YouTube and they're really successful, like the Justin Biebers and stuff. And it's like, oh, he's a 13-year-old kid and he's making as much money as Madonna. I don't want that to happen to Lex. I want Lex to be somebody who is an imposing figure and who can fight somebody and maybe could even fight Batman. And if you mean to tell me that fucking Jesse Eisenberg is going to fight Batman and get away with it, no. I just can't see it. If he can fight Aquaman, he can do anything. Oh, well, I think uh, a school of fish can fight Aquaman. <laughs> well, from, from what I've heard, again, just rumors could – like tomorrow, this could turn out to be totally wrong. But from what I've heard, Lex is like you said. He's the self-made man. And because he's the self-made man, he has this this pride, this just cocky attitude to him. And they said that – um, when he meets with Bruce Wayne, like it's obvious that he's going to do in the movie, the book billionaires that he does not like Bruce Wayne where he oh, sees we, Bruce we, Wayne as this guy who the only reason he's a billionaire is because he inherited it. So he was given everything. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth while he had to literally fight and claw his way to build a billion dollar business. So that's definitely going to set him at odds with Bruce. Mm-hmm. That that attitude could definitely set him. Another thing that I guess a lot of people didn't like Man of Steel in the way for him, obviously, like killing Zod and stuff like that and the destruction that he caused. If you treat Man of Steel as a way of looking at the sequel, Superman, this had to be an origin story for Superman. He couldn't be Superman throughout the movie. I think the way they described it was he isn't actually Superman until the end of the film. The mm-hmm. film kind of makes him into Superman. And if I take that as what they're going to do with Lex, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor can only start out as a businessman. He can have all those personality traits, but he can't really be the villain until midway to towards the end of the movie. He can't start out as what we picture as Lex Luthor. He has to become that somehow. Hmm. And I was going into it thinking he became it at the end of Man of Steel, where in the background he was just like, somebody messed up Metropolis, the thing that I built, and this is like a personal shot at me, and who did it? Oh, this guy? What, the people are talking about this guy? Fuck this guy, that kind of a yeah. thing. And they would do like a little bit of a backstory of him rebuilding Metropolis and making it a whole big thing of like, he's not the guy you should be paying attention to. You should still be focused on me. You're taking away my pride. Like, right. Like, you call this guy Superman and he's not even a man. Right. You never called me Superman. I'm the one who built this fucking city. Like, that kind of a thing. And my right. whole big issue with this is basically just down to the way that Jesse Eisenberg looks. And it's really a shame. But if you would have given me a 30-something-year-old guy, not an older guy, too. I hate the idea when they keep going older. You give me somebody who looks the same age as Henry Cavill, and that's also something I had a problem with with um, Amy Adams. For I don't think she's a good Lois Lane at all, and I think part of the reason is her age. She looks older, and she is older than Superman, and Lois should not look like she's 10 years older. But um, I think if you gave me somebody like... I had heard the rumor that John Hamm would have been a potential choice. 
He's a little bit older than what I would have gone with, but if you told me John Hamm was Lex Luthor, I'd buy it so much more than Jesse Eisenberg. If you tell me Jesse Eisenberg's in the movie and don't tell me who he's playing, I would have been like, oh, he's a great Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one other topic I wanted to mention before we end the Superman versus Batman general talk and then we move on to some of the other things. Who do you want to see as the secondary villain in the movie? It can't just be Lex, obviously. So there got to be somebody for them to punch. Right. Who, do, who do you want in it, Days? It's tough. Uh, I I think it, it depends which direction they go. If they go into battling each other, I don't think you need the secondary villain. I think you can use Lex as the middleman, uh, kind of like a Loki role that just starts turning each other, turning them on each other. Uh, then you don't need that secondary villain. If they don't fight each other or they do a brief, I'm going to punch Superman, realize that my fist broke and I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, To me, it would have to be another sophisticated villain from the more or less the Batman side of it. So like a Ra's al Ghul, but he's been overdone. Just something of that nature. Maybe Deathstroke, just to get someone who's more intellectual and not like a killer croc or something so to me if they stick with the superman versus batman idea uh lex is the only villain they need who would you have if they needed because they need somebody for superman to punch possibly i mean you take a kryptonian he can withstand the punch but if you give him mm-hmm. somebody like a ra's al ghul he'll knock him out in one shot the the only villain that i enjoyed superman battling across because I, I really do not care for the superman character um is dark side but I think Darkseid is better saved for a Justice League movie. Same with as a, a Doomsday. It's it just you need someone to match the Superman power and strength, and then you find someone like that and you make Batman null and void. So it's it's going to be a, a very hard task for them to do. But if, if they need someone to punch, uh, why not Doomsday? It could be a, pr- a predecessor to Darkseid. I'll throw a name out for you guys to think about: Metallo. What do you think about, uh, who would you like to see, Orion? Well, in my opinion, um, I believe Lex deserves some sort of henchman. Someone he can throw at Superman and Batman, you know, because Lex can be the mastermind in the background. I mean, of course, he's going to be in the foreground as Jesse Eisenberg, but he could be like the man plotting the downfall of Superman and at the same time, like, you know, you got this Batman problem, too, so might as well take care of him. So we need, like, a secondary villain that could not only face Batman, but also Superman. And I'm not too familiar with the DC catalog, um, but I was just entertaining the thought right now. Since they're going to go into a Justice League movie and maybe start an entire DC universe, cinematic universe uh, franchise there's a character I know of um, I guess his name is Black Adam mm-hmm. he's part of the um, he's part of the Shazam Captain Marvel or whatever you call him fr- franchise I think it'd be cool you'd ha- definitely have to re- heavily rework sh- uh, Black Adam's origin but I know that Superman's one of Superman's weaknesses is magic so somehow uh, we can get Lex Luthor to contract Black Adam somehow. I mean, I think Black Adam has some sort of Egyptian background. I don't know. You'd have to tell me because I don't know too much about Black Adam. But he seems like the kind of antithesis to Superman in that he's an evil Superman type of thing with uh, Superman's weakness in magic. So perhaps Black Adam as a sort of secondary henchman type of thing for Lex Luthor, who maybe later on becomes um, uncontrollable. Perhaps that Lex Luthor unleashes this terrible force and he can't ag- exactly control it. Makes so, sense. I mean, it, it's it's far-fetched and everything, but it would also open up for perhaps a Shazam movie or something in the future. Sam, what do you think? Who should be uh, taking the punches from Superman in this movie? Well, there's two different ways that I see this. The first way is, and the way that I hope they do it, 
is that there is nobody for Superman to punch. I think there was so much physical <laughs> action for Superman in Man of Steel that now it would be interesting for Lex to kind of stand there and say, you beat the shit out of your fellow Kryptonians. You literally broke Zod's neck. Come on, I dare you to punch me. Like, you can't punch me. Where the, the Kryptonians, the only way he could beat them was physically. Well, now he's got somebody that is his mental superior. And now it's almost like what, it's almost like the bully in school who's like, go ahead, punch me while the teacher's standing right there. Like, he's egging Superman on, knowing Superman isn't going to do a damn thing about it, while the entire public, who some people saw him as the hero, some people probably blamed him for doing it, if you win those people over and you really make him look like a hero, he he has to restrain himself. That's a good if point. You, if you went with somebody to actually fight him, I was, I was thinking either Brainiac or Metallo. I was thinking either LexCorp creates Metallo as a defense against Superman, or Same as like a, 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 yeah, a military contract maybe, where he already had some run-in with the military in Man of Steel, where maybe they hired LexCorp to be like, yo, we'll trust this guy, but we better have a backup in case he turns all Zod on us. Brainiac could be a possibility where you already had Zod say that there was a beacon that led them to him. Well, maybe this same beacon was picked up by Brainiac. I don't want to say it's rehashing the Kryptonian invasion, since isn't Brainiac Kryptonian, or am I thinking that up? There's two different versions of the character. Sometimes he's not, and he's just this green alien who happens to be super smart from another country. Another country. <laughs> yeah, another country. He's from fucking France. Um, <laughs> from another planet, and he's named Vrild Rocks or something. Vril Docks, I think is what it is. Um, but that's that the green Brainiac from the old time where it was like they called him Brainiac because he's got a big head and comics were silly at that time. I personally like the idea of the one from the animated series where he's the artificial intelligence from Krypton. Yeah. So if, if you go that route, I could definitely see Brainiac as being an option. But I really like uh, Metallo where LexCorp creates Metallo as a way. And he could even like in many of the incarnations they show him. He could, uh, they could act. LexCorp could actually create kryptonite right. based on some of the Kryptonian weaponry that was left behind. I mean, Zod ripped off his own armor in the movie, and they didn't really go back into that. Lex could always have found it during cleanup and actually created either Metallo from that or weaponry from that. That's exactly what I would end up going with. I think it's the one that makes the most sense and the most basic thing because you don't need to actually build much on Metallo. He's just. You've got a guy who wants to be in the suit. Okay, here you go. You're my henchman. Go fight Superman. Right. Like you don't need to build it. You build up Batman and um, Lex Luthor in the process instead. Not devote any time to that character. Yeah. So I would either vote that, or I would vote there is nobody for Superman to hit, so that now he needs to actually bring his character up front, where he can't hit him. He has to outsmart him, and that way, if there is somebody like Metallo then there's nothing for Batman to do. Unless Batman, you turn it into a Superman versus Metallo and Lex versus Batman. But then Batman, I would just imagine, would kick Lex's ass in a physical fight. Unless Lex had some sort of exosuit like he has in many of the other stories. A little preliminary Metallo suit is what I would go with. The, yeah. thing, the test subject uh, sort of thing. What we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny bit of a break here and we're going to come back in part two and talk about Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, and all of the other offshoot characters that are going to play a part in the film franchise. Welcome back to part two, everybody, of this group meeting discussion on the DC film universe. And we're going to talk about a lot of the other characters that aren't going to get too much playtime or any playtime whatsoever in Superman vs. Batman, including the main core roster of the different people that you've seen usually wonder woman flash green lantern and some of the other characters that might pop up we've got aquaman green arrow cyborg shazam martian manhunter black canary vixen who knows lots of other characters could eventually show up so we're gonna just 
run down a whole big list of them and do our opinions on all that other kind of stuff. But before we get started, I'm going to reintroduce here the Wonder Woman of this podcast, Nikki Mills. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) And transition time. Woo, good job there, Tony. Uh, We're going to start talking about Wonder Woman. And we mentioned a little bit about how do you introduce the character into this franchise with uh, the first section of Superman versus Batman. Because Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot, I think it's Gal Gadot, um, will be... It is Gal Gadot? Yeah. All right. Gal Gadot, she will be playing a part in the movie, but they haven't expli- explicitly said it, how big of a part it is, what she's doing, or any of that kind of stuff. Um, in general, what do you guys think they should do to incorporate her? Do you think that she should be Wonder Woman in the movie? Do you think that she should get a solo movie before they do Justice League? Or are they good enough where they can just kind of throw her in there in Justice League and just be like, okay, Wonder Woman, you kind of know this backstory because she's a popular character, just go for it. Dace, what do you think? I, I think she should needs to, at least in the Batman Superman movie, to play a role similar to that of Black Widow in Iron Man 2. Very low-key, not sure who she is until like they go, oh, well, this is Diana, and then we go, oh, that's Wonder Woman. So we it kind of gives that kind of incorporation. I think DC and Warner Brothers should be chomping at the bit to get her own solo movie out because that's one thing marvel hasn't done yet they haven't given us a a strong female lead uh i've done the article on miss marvel so to me that's a race whoever gets the first female lead out there i think is going to be huge why they wouldn't capitalize on that i don't know orion uh yeah basically the same thing um black widow her in iron man 2 uh i mean i'd I'm not familiar with the actress's work. Uh, I know she's been in the Need for Speed, and I haven't seen a single Need for Speed movie. But um, that's uh, Fast so- and the Furious. Oh well, whatever the Fast and the Furious is. <laughs> same thing. Same <laughs> thing. She's in the Grand Theft Auto movie. Same thing. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think she should be Wonder Woman in Man of Steel two. Uh, she should just come in as you know, not not even like name her as Diana. Have her come in under some sort of moniker or something, you know, some false identity as sort of a spy of some sort for like the Amazon community. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts. Sam, what do you think? Oh, well, first I don't really like that idea because the Amazons don't want anything to do mankind so if she was some sort of spy for them that wouldn't really make too much sense from a character standpoint i would definitely kind of put her in like you guys said low key like at least call her diana do put that and maybe either towards the end of the film for a final fight i at least want to see her in costume i at least want that to be a thing and i don't know if plans have changed but they've said that superman from Man of Steel coming out to the world as a superhero, they said that, like, it's not to say that all the other heroes aren't already out there. That basically the other heroes are established and they exist in the universe. They're just not publicly identified. So I would I would like to see her as Wonder Woman. We're already going to have Batman in there, so, I mean, I don't really want this to be, like, a, a three-character story. But... I would I would like to see her in costume, even if you don't call her Wonder Woman anywhere in the movie. At least say that I am Diana of whatever the fuck they're gonna call it, Themyscira, Paradise Island, whatever they want to say, and like then, Detroit or something. <laughs> yeah, I am so, Diana I, of uh, twenty hope minutes away do, from Tampa. Yeah, I do hope they do something with the Greek. So like even if she's not identified as wonder woman and that she's just diana i hope she's got just something a little nod that says hey those of you who pay attention this is wonder woman and those of you who don't pay attention oh you're gonna get a surprise at the end what do you think about that nikki how would you introduce her uh the thing is i don't know i don't know how uh it would transition well if you just kind of through somebody and like, hey, hey, I'm here. Um, I agree with Sam for the most part, um, but it, it depends on how you present them, I guess, in a perspective. Um, like, uh, what was it that we just saw? Justice League. Justice League War. War. Um, 
you know, it's expected to have at least one female protagonist in there. And the way that uh, Diana was portrayed in uh, Justice League War, you know, it's completely different from how you typically see Wonder Woman, but it transitioned in how you would expect her to be. Um, you know, the same traits that uh, that she would have. And as long as you keep that perspective and as long as you keep the main key points of uh, the character that you're playing, it's okay to switch it up. It's okay to throw it in there as long as you're not completely overhauling and taking over and, you know, it being completely different. You know, people are going to be like, what the fuck? What is this? Who is this character? This isn't Wonder Woman. This isn't, you know, anybody that you would think it would be. So, I mean, I agree for the most part. I got to go with a, a variation of the Black Widow concept. I think you introduce her, but you don't really make her that important. She's somebody who can stay around in the background and you don't even shine that much of a light on her. I don't even know if it would necessarily be as much as Black Widow because Black Widow's got that action set piece at the end of Iron Man 2. I don't even think you do that with her. I think um, a good way to introduce her would be kind of something similar to what's been rumored where she is involved in the Wayne side of things. I think she should be Bruce's girlfriend. And he should just be kind of, I mean, this is kind of a crude way to say it. He should just be like, hey, she's hot. I'd bang her. Why not? I'm Bruce Wayne. And that's all he really has invested into it. Except maybe, I don't know if you want to go this far. This depends on your definition of bat god. Um, If you go with the idea that he's investigating Superman and he's looking into him and he's not 100% trustworthy of Lex Luthor, maybe you make it to where she's the one that he was too busy and that slipped under his radar and he didn't even realize that something was going on. Or maybe you just go, Hey, I already said I keep my enemies closer than my friends and everything like that. Why do you think that I was with Diana of everything? Cause something's weird with her. And you make it to where she is looking into like a Greek artifact or something. Maybe it has ties to the Kryptonian stuff. Like what we've heard. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe she's just looking into it because she's trying to figure out like the idea of man's world. And we've got these three huge uh, imposing figures of mankind and Batman, Superman and Luthor. And she's got to figure out, well, you've got Superman here who is a God and he is more like her, but then you've got Batman who's a prick like she is, but then you've got Luthor who represents the evil in the world. And she's kind of like investigating that sort of thing. And I think all you really need to do this is totally not the way I would have done it, though. If they, if they would have come up to me before Man of Steel and said, plan out this, no way this would have been it. But I think you end the movie with Diana kind of being found out by Bruce. Or maybe she just tells him. I don't know. And you can do a little wrap-up voiceover and talk about how they've come to terms with the idea that Batman and Superman are out there and they're friends and they're going to work together in the future. And you never know who's out there and they can show you little clips of like, if they're going to include Aquaman in there, show a little quick clip of something going on in the sea, show something happening at Mars for the Martian Manhunter. show, I don't know, uh, a lightning bolt. And that's going to reference the flash and, a lot of different stuff like that. And all you need to do is you need to have Gal Gadot putting on the outfit. Or even just part of the outfit. Just like the tiara or something like that. Just enough to make you go, okay, she's already become Wonder Woman in a lot of different ways. All she needs to do is she's never fought for Earth. Because I like the idea that she's going into this as that character kind of like Thor. I mean, we're going to talk about this in the comparisons to Avengers thing. But somebody who's not used to this kind of stuff. She shouldn't. She should be a skilled warrior, but she shouldn't be somebody who has been fighting on Earth, knows Steve Trevor, all this other kind of stuff. Uh, Casting-wise, though, um, for Wonder Woman, we talked about Batfleck, we talked about Jesse Eisenberg. What do you think about Gal Gadot? Uh, I have heard criticisms about her acting talent but like orion had said i've never actually watched any movie that she's been in so i can't criticize that and i've heard criticisms about her physique which mostly comes down to two different things and it's not just left and right but it's uh 
her breast size and her muscular physique. A lot of people are like, oh, she doesn't have big enough boobs to be Wonder Woman. And a lot of people are like, she doesn't have big enough muscles to be Wonder Woman. What do you think about that, Dace? Does she look right for the part? Does she act right for the part? Is she somebody who it's a good choice or you don't know anything about and you can't really judge or you know that she's going to fail? What do you think? I, I haven't seen any movies she's been in. Uh, I, I'm definitely in that collective. But I, I'm actually a big fan for these movies to go out, uh, for these productions to go out and grab people that we're not too familiar with. I think if you oversaturate with big names, you get a uh, Batman and Robin. Um, so it gives her a chance to take that role, own that role, and I bet you nine out of ten times, I, I guarantee you she has nothing else in the pipeline. So she can commit to being Wonder Woman and owning it. Uh, whereas, like, now you're running into an issue with Iron Man 3, or Iron Man, Tony, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is pretty much done with the role. Whereas someone like a Gale can play this as long as she wants. Hmm. Orion? Um, well, judging by what I've seen in pictures and stuff, I mean, I'm not expecting a huge, you know, buff and tentacular <laughs> Wonder Woman. Um, I've never been one for the whole sexualization of these feminine, of these female superheroes. Uh, so going with Gil Gadot, or however you say her name, Gal Gadot, uh, it's a it's a bold move. And I'm excited to see how far she takes her physical training. Um, I just hope they don't over-sexualize her. Now, Nikki, do you think in any regards to that? Um, yeah, for one, uh, I mean, the people who criticize this woman's appearance uh, for the role should probably sit down and think how many women look borderline Amazonian <laughs> right. could also portray the portray the uh, role acting wise as Wonder Woman and you're probably going to think of absolutely none there's no woman who's 6 foot tall 300 pounds of nothing but muscle with, and tits that go from here to Alaska <laughs> who are also <laughs> extremely attractive enough and talented enough to portray Wonder Woman it's not going to happen uh they all need to. They all need to shut up about that because it's never. You're never gonna find somebody like that. And if you do, um, uh, I, I don't know. What, I I wouldn't know what to say to that because I mean, how, how? It, you sit and look at a Wonder Woman in the comic books, and you just see nothing but tits and in a spandex little unitar, you know, flowy hair, gorgeous. But it's not plausible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never seen any movie that she's been in either, but after looking at her, uh, I think she would do really well for the part. Um, as long as she can get any physical training down or whatever, uh, I think she'd be fantastic, especially especially if she pulls off, if they um, give her the look of Diana in Justice League War. Because, I mean, that would probably suit her a lot better than the traditional, you know, yellow, stupid, guitar thing with the TR and all that, you know, if they gave her more of a, a warrior esque look, it would probably kind of shade the fact that she isn't uh, an Amazonian woman. So, I mean, I actually, I'm pretty okay with it. I think she'd do a great job. I have like nothing that I can contribute that Nikki didn't land on. <laughs> Sam, what do you well, think about that? Do you have any uh, opinions that we haven't discussed yet or the same things you want to echo or something? I think they should have cast the Russian woman from Kick-Ass, too. Oh, God. I was, was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like I said, like I implied someone who is attractive. Well, uh, yeah, that, that was definitely a joke. <laughs> but uh, like Nikki said, I, I'm going back to Justice League War a lot because that's really the biggest thing that I've been I, – I, it's the biggest thing I've seen about the new 52 – I don't know too much about the new 52. So if you had only given me information on Wonder Woman from before they did this, then I would have thought, no, Gal Gadot definitely is not Wonder Woman. She definitely doesn't have the look. She can't pull it off. But given this new – I can't say how new it is. When did the new 52 even come out? It's been like, what, three years now? 
probably yeah probably three years i think i don't remember for yeah. sure it might have been 2011 yeah that wonder woman i could definitely see gal gadot as that wonder woman the biggest problem when it comes to like you said the over sexualizing her please don't give her pants it, there's some things like there are, there are just some things about a character's uniform that are just so iconic i guess that you just don't change them you don't take away her tiara. You don't take away her lasso. And I just, I can't picture Wonder Woman having pants. It, it's not a sex thing. It's just that to me is Wonder Woman. If you altered Batman's costume too much or Superman's costume too much, I would have a similar problem with it. Hmm. Well, Ryan, you say uh, you got to head out right now, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, but. It's off to see Walking Dead, so <laughs> not not too bad. Well, before I give my opinions about that, I'll let you uh, throw out anything else that you might want to throw out here for uh, what we might reference later on or anything you want to plug or anything else like that. <laughs> All right. Um, so basically, uh, I know we're probably going to get around to the topic of what other uh, DC superhero movies do we want to see in the future. Um, for me, if, uh, if we're going to do another Batman movie... Um, might as well just do something bold, go uh, Batman Beyond, futuristic Batman. There's been a lot of um, discussion on how that could be done. Uh, and I'd love to see uh, a new take on Batman. Uh, then just to end my plug, you know, the, our final words, uh, please visit uh, the Venom site. Uh, that's www thevenomsite.com for all your venom and symbiote needs on the Marvel side. Uh, thank you very much for having me, and I will see you guys in a future podcast. All right, see you, Ryan. So getting back into the Wonder Woman discussion just a little bit, one other thing that I wanted to chime in on my own uh, opinions about was that costume situation. Uh, I totally agree with what Nikki was saying about the you, you factor in physique and acting talent and all this other kind of stuff. You can't find anybody that's going to accomplish all of it. So you have to downgrade something from the perspective of the fans. And as far as I'm concerned, you have to keep acting talent. And I'm assuming she's good. I got to go with their uh, their choices here. I think acting wise, they've picked good people so far for Man of Steel. It's just whether or not they've done the right thing in the script for them. Like, uh, you know, I think that the idea of this General Swanwick guy was stupid. He did a good job, but you give me a choice of a general to put in a movie, he's going to be General Sam Lane. Those are the discussions that I have more of an issue with. Uh, so if they think that Godot is good enough acting wise, then I'll trust their judgment. And. She's attractive enough, for sure. That's a guarantee. So, when the people are really going overboard and they're talking about her cup size and all that other kind of stuff, give me a break. You know, uh, when Chris Evans was cast as Captain America, he didn't have the musculature of Captain America. Christian Bale was fat when he was cast as Batman because he had gained weight for a role. Like, or no, he was skinny for it. Then he got fat. That's what it was. So... You know, people transform and all that other kind of stuff. If you were going to go just for physique, you'd end up with one of those stupid fan-made films where the people end up looking the part, but they can't act for shit. And a lot of people wanted Gina Carano to play the character because she has a very similar look. I don't think that she can necessarily act either. I don't know much about that. So if that was the position where she can't act, give me Gal Gadot, 100%. And as far as the pants issue goes... I'm okay with it. I like the idea that the Superman outfit in Man of Steel didn't have the underwear. I like the armor that they've used in Dark Knight, as opposed to giving Batman the the blue outfit or the gray one or anything like that. So I think Wonder Woman, she deserves to have pants eventually. But maybe throw a reference out there. Maybe like her outfit is a sectioned off kind of thing where she's got that on and that's like this is going to, this is going to sound like very uh, overly sexual more than it needs to be but maybe that's like her spandex kind of one that doesn't have the pants is what she lounges around in maybe that's like her non-formal wear 
And like, when she yeah, goes can... into battle, she wears the whole fucking outfit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can see that more than that would put you on board with the pants. <laughs> that that no, okay. If, if like it was like uh, like you said like a battle armor almost, then yeah, I could see that. But... That would be a way to do it, I think. Uh, let's move on to the her other characters. Not... Was that what? Uh, I said her pants aren't going to make or break it. It's just it was a personal preference. Right. The other characters, though, this gets a little bit more confusing. We know Wonder Woman's in this in some capacity, but we have no confirmation about anybody else. And the two biggest names that are guaranteed they have to be in this Justice League movie are the Flash and Green Lantern. Everybody else, you might not necessarily need them. We need Flash and Green Lantern in this. First thing I gotta ask, though, who do they end up picking? Do you go with Hal Jordan or Jon Stewart? Especially if they might be able to get The Rock to play him. Do you go with Barry Allen or Wally West or Bart Allen even? Doubt they would go with Bart Allen, but which do you end up going with? What do you think, Dace? It's gotta be Hal. I don't care if The Rock's trying to sign up for the movie or whatever the hell he's doing. The dynamic between Hal and Bruce, I have always enjoyed through the comics, and I think Jon Stewart is a very boring Green Lantern. Out of all the, the, the incarnations of the Green Lantern, he is my least favorite. And to me, I like Hal's attitude. If not, you know, I'm cool with Kyle. Um, but, uh, God, Jon Stewart is just, I don't like him as a Green Lantern, and I don't want to see him on the screen, but I really feel like that's what they're going to go with. Thank you for echoing that point, though, that I've mentioned before. I think Jon Stewart is boring, and I think it's a shame that so many people like the character just because of his race. Yeah, and that, that's the reason he showed up in the cartoon. And I get it. I'm fine with that. It's just Hal has so much charisma behind him, and his quips and his one-liners is just... Stuart is a military background, and I don't. I think you've got too many serious leads in this for superheroes that you need a Hal Jordan to uh, break that. Yeah, and I'm man, before people go into the whole thing of like, well, what do you got a, an issue with race or something like that? No issue whatsoever. I mean, I love the fact that they changed Perry White and they got uh, Lawrence Fishburne to play it. I think that that was awesome. I would have been fine if they would have had a black Jimmy Olsen. I would have been fine if they, ha- I, you know, Metallo is not black. If they have him in the movie and he's black or Indian or Asian or something like that, you know, I'm on board with that kind of stuff. I just don't like the Jon Stewart character. And yeah. I I actually feel the same way about Guy Gardner. I don't think mm-hmm. Guy Gardner is a good choice for this. And I don't even think Kyle Rayner is because Kyle is okay, but Kyle's not that much different from Hal. And if you're going to get somebody close to that, just give me Hal. You know, mm-hmm. you can recast it. You don't need Ryan Reynolds. And as long as you have Hal Jordan in there, because he is the main Green Lantern. I don't care about Alan Scott. He doesn't count. So you need to have Hal Jordan as far as I'm concerned. Sam, what do you think? I think... He said Sam, Nikki. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) I think whoever they choose is going to determine the dynamic between Green Lantern and Flash. If they go with Jon Stewart, I imagine they're going to have Wally as the Flash. Because Hal would definitely be comic relief. He's a dick. He's a jokester. And it wouldn't make sense to have both Hal Jordan and Wally West in the same film. They're, and I don't want to say they're the same character. But they're too similar. If you have Jon Stewart, who's a lot more serious... Then you can't have Barry Allen, who's a little more responsible as the Flash. You gotta either have Barry with Hal or Wally with John. I feel like is the only way that kind of balances out. Who do I want to see? I would Flash. I really don't care. From the animated TV series, Wally was funny in that. I liked him, but I, if I had to, fl- it, you could flip a coin. If it's Wally or Barry. But when it comes to Green Lantern, like you guys said, Hal Jordan is my Green Lantern. If you have a Jon Stewart, fine. Just don't make him the deadpan. Don't like don't make him so overly serious. Because Superman is gonna have to be serious. Batman, there is no incarnation of him outside of Adam West 
where he is anything but to himself and dark. So if you have too many serious people and then Wally West and Wonder Woman, he's just he, he's going to be a pain in the ass. If you have and, and Wonder Woman has real no sense of comedy. She doesn't know anything about our world. Yeah, she can't so, tell stand up for shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I really think the best way for them to do it is have Barry Allen who can crack a joke. He's not serious, but he's responsible. And then have Hal Jordan be the one who's just the gigantic douchebag who just – if Batman says we need to do this, he's going to be like, no, we're going to do this because I'm Green Lantern and that's what I say. What do you think, Nikki? I'm actually going to be on uh, a stick in the mud here. I hate Hal Jordan and I hate Wally uh, if you're looking for options for the Green Lantern and the Flash. Uh, I think Hal Jordan is a complete and utter douchebag. Uh, I can't stand him. I can't stand his attitude. I can't stand any little quirky remarks he has along with people. When it comes to the two, I prefer Wally uh, being the Flash over uh, <sighs> over Barry. And my number one favorite Green Lantern is Jon Stewart. <laughs> so uh, if I were to see the combination with... Uh, anything involving the Justice League, I would much, much rather have Jon Stewart um, being the more serious one. Now, do I want him overly serious like Superman or like Batman would and expect to be? No. Um, I feel like like it would be just a bunch of people like meaning business and then you have that one person who's always like overly annoying, overly obnoxious, and it wouldn't really blend. Um, but I do prefer, I would prefer to see uh, Jon Stewart as Green Lantern and have Wally be the annoying little shit stain of Justice League. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that that uh, I'm. It seems like I'm the only person that thinks that, but uh, I can't stand Hal Jordan. I can't stand Hal Jordan whatsoever. He annoys me. This is what is scaring me about the idea that we've heard of the Rock playing John Stewart in it. The Rock is comedic, and I don't want John Stewart to be in the movie and not be Jon Stewart and just be Hal Jordan, but black. I think yeah. that, I think that they have a huge risk of doing that. And somebody like the rock, I mean, if that were the character, then that would be fine. But the idea of having a Jon Stewart in there, making him a military guy who jokes around too, why not just have him stay in fucking GI Joe? Like, that's not what they need for this. I think that they need to go with a, a comedic Flash one and maybe incorporate certain aspects of the character in there. Maybe Hal isn't really the the comic relief as much. Maybe he's like 50% of the comic relief and the other 50% is Barry Allen who has some of the traits of Wally West. There's going to be some kind of a happy medium, I hope. But... I don't know. I mean, I'm really worried about what they could do that because that could be something that could be a huge issue. And I think that they need to balance it out. Um, I'm kind of killing one of my main points here that I would have mentioned with the comparisons to the Avengers thing. But the way that I look at the dynamic of the group, if you were to compare it to the Avengers film, Superman is a combination of Hulk and Captain America. He is the overall powerhouse but he has the mentality of Captain America. He's the Boy Scout. Batman is a combination of Iron Man and Captain America, where he's got that role in the group of the non-powered one, and he's a dick. He's like the Iron Man situation where he's the tech guy, and he um, he kind of plays by his own rules, that kind of a thing. Wonder Woman is 100% Thor. That's it. She's the outsider. She speaks differently. She's the secondary powerhouse of the team. Green Lantern is a combination of Hawkeye and Iron Man. He's the guy that's the high flyer, and he's the the, the ranged fighter, sort of. But he's Hawkeye in the sense that he's comedic, but he's the serious comedic one. And I always kind of viewed Hal as that. He's much more serious than the Flash is, but he's still kind of a jokester. Black Widow and Iron Man would be a combination of the Flash, where he's the comedic one. And he wouldn't be as jokey as uh, the Iron Man role is. He'd be more a little bit like what Black Widow was. But he's a little bit of the heart of the team. He fulfills that kind of a role here. 
Um, Dace, did you mention who you would rather have for the Flash? Uh, I, I I'd rather go with Barry. I'm, the the reason I would go with uh, Barry is Flash. I feel like Warner Brothers, seeing as they pretty much own all of DC when it comes to movies and shit like that, uh, should expand on their opportunity to make a universe. And why not grab Barry from the TV show if you're <laughs> shooting off a TV show? That's something that I wanted to bring up too. I don't want that yeah. to happen at all. They're never across the TV in the films. Why would yeah. you want to the um the Grant Gustin or Gustin or whatever? The Grant Gada <laughs> of um, the TV show to be Barry Allen. Why do you want those to, to cross over? I just feel like there, there's so much opportunity there with the universe that Flash probably won't get his own movie. Um, whereas you can build that in the TV show. Same with Arrow. Build uh, Green Arrow to show up for the Justice League movie. But build those two in the TV show universe. And then they come up as minor support characters in the Justice League movie. Because... They're, D- DC and Warner are no way organized as much as Marvel is, and to put this together, it, it's just not going to happen. I, I'm already turned off from the Batman Superman movie just from announcements that I've heard, and with the, they cast John Stewart, it's a final nail in the cof- coffin. I won't go see it. Really? You're not going to go to the movies with us? <laughs> well, I, I didn't go see The Dark Knight Rises. Oh, that's true. So it, it, DC, they lose me a lot of times when it comes to the comics. Hmm. Uh, one other thing about spe- the specifically of Flash and Green Lantern do you guys think that they're going to be kind of outsiders and neglected if they're not in Superman versus Batman if we see Superman and Batman for the entirety of a film and we see Wonder Woman in some capacity and then the next film is the Justice League is it going to feel weird that they don't have Flash and Green Lantern if they don't reference them in some way or are they just kind of like the way that they not even that, the way that they incorporated Black Eye, uh, Black Eye, Hawkeye, and Black Widow, where they did pop up ahead of time. They wouldn't even be that much. It would be also uh, not only confusing, but it would be kind of I don't know, like, disrespectful, I guess I could say, um, for Flash and Green Lantern, because they clearly in the Justice League movie would not be the primary people. They got to be the, the supplemental ones. And if they don't get any kind of a reference in Superman versus Batman, and then they just get thrust upon as supporting characters in Justice League, is that not doing them justice? What do you think, Sam? Yeah. Um, I think Hal Jordan... Uh, well, okay, th- that's if they do it. If they do John Stewart, then obviously this doesn't work. But because Hal Jordan is in the Air Force, I think if they, they went this military route with Man of Steel... And I feel like they should maintain that to ground this in reality where the military is not going to keep their eye off of Superman. So if they want somebody to kind of keep an eye on him or if they assign a team maybe to spy on him, have that be just Hal Jordan. It doesn't even have to be important. You could just like have the military introduce Superman to different people and how Jordan can make like a wise crack at him or something like that. And then in justice league, Hey, it turns out how Jordan was the green lantern. Um, I don't really see how you could have the flash. I mean, it, it, Barry is a uh, CSI, right? Right. So, I mean, you could kind of tie him into Batman. I could see that. But you're right. It's weird. I don't see how you could put them in this movie without it feeling either crowded or it's like, oh, well, they kind of just mentioned him. And why didn't they actually have him do more in the film? Like, why would Superman, Batman and possibly Wonder Woman be fighting this thing? And yet you introduced Green Lantern and he's not doing anything. But at the same time, like you said, if you introduce Flash and Green Lantern in Justice League, then is it going to feel like the Justice League is Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and then Green Lantern and Flash? I don't really want that, because they are very important characters, and they should be keystoned to the Justice League. So, I mean, it's tough. I really don't have an opinion. Oh, okay, I have an opinion, but I don't really have an example of how you could do it, because it's very touchy. Hmm. What do you think, Nikki? Um, uh, I don't have anything that, um, Sam didn't already say. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I don't know, like I said, uh, like like he said, um, it being too cluttered with too many too many different things going on with like all of these main characters, it's gonna be kind of overwhelming to take in. Uh, you can't have like three or more uh, different characters going after you know two or three different things all in the span of a couple of hours. It, it's just it, it's going to be too much to wrap your head around, uh, and it's it's going to be too overwhelming. And you're not going to get the full detail of everything, you know, if you um, go to put all of these things in at once. It's kind of like um, uh, what did remind me? Kind of like Spider-Man. Like there wasn't too many things in it, but there were too many things going on in the Amazing Spider-Man. Like like 30 minutes into the movie, Uncle Ben was already dead. You know, like, it's like, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Sure. Uh, whatever. Um, it, it's going to be that kind of aspect. Maybe not, um, the same way, like time wise, but in under 30 minutes, if you've already got like two bad guys and three protagonists going on and they're getting ready to fight, that's like, what's going to happen for the other hour and a half? Like, what are they going to be doing then? And if you try to bring in too much stuff in that as well, then it, it's not going to be, it's not going to be enjoyable because you don't know what exactly is going on with the backstory, but they're fighting for some fucking reason, you know? So, um, uh, if they just pace it and don't try to add as many things as possible to get, you know, uh, bigger names and whatnot in the movie, bigger characters to get people to draw, uh, drawn into it to go see it, then it'll work. Um, so yeah. I've got one thing that I think might solve one of the issues, but it all depends, and it kind of depends on um, what they're planning on doing with Superman versus Batman as opposed to what they're going to do with Justice League. I think if you have just the, the Wonder Woman reference, like we were talking about like the Black Widow style thing where she really doesn't play too much of a big part, it might kind of balance out a little bit better where people won't notice Flash and Green Lantern weren't given any spotlight at all. Because then they'll be looking for, well, we're finally going to get a chance to see Wonder Woman too, And it'll be like, well, all we got to see was Superman and Batman. So three characters that haven't been given a lot, balancing it out against the two main ones, that might work better than if it was the three prominent Trinity kind of members and then the two sideliners. Um, maybe it's my perspective, but I don't think that I'm necessarily wrong in thinking it. I think that a lot of people view the Justice League in that kind of a regard, where it's Superman and Batman, oh, and Wonder Woman's there too, and a bunch of other people. And maybe they can structure the movies around that kind of a mentality, where Superman and Batman are clearly above and beyond the two main characters, and you don't have to question it because they're Superman and Batman. I mean, come on. And then Wonder Woman's got that... B level spot and Flash and Green Lantern do have the C level spot. They need to play it safe though. And I think one way that you can incorporate Green Lantern into it is kind of like what Sam was saying, where he's a member of the military. But another route that you can do is if they go with Darkseid as the main villain of the uh, Justice League movie and they have like the parademons and an invasion kind of style thing, sort of like Justice League War, instead of having Green Lantern as somebody from Earth's military factoring in there, why not make him somebody who came back to Earth because of a distress signal after he was looking at something extraplanetary from a dark side invasion? So he can be the character that explains the plot to us and go, you, I haven't really dealt with these guys, but I've been on lots of planets and I've heard some tough shit about these uh, people from Apocalypse. Flash, though, no idea whatsoever at all what they could do to incorporate him in here. Dace, what do you think about Flash and Green Lantern? Are they going to be really just out of place if they don't introduce them in these movies, or what? I I, I think ultimately they're going to get screwed. Um, DC needs to take the approach of just slow down build these characters, give them their own franchises, and then do your Justice League movie. I think they saw <clears throat> that cash cow of the Avengers and said, hey, we <clears throat> we can do that. Whereas, they're going to rush it, get something shitty, and then they can't do anything, they can't salvage it afterwards. 
Uh, I think Green Lantern and Flash are both going to get the, uh, hey, this is the Green Lantern and the Flash. They're they're part of your team. It's like treat, and they shouldn't. They should have their own franchise. They're they're strong enough characters with enough history that they could, and they just need to slow down. Now, as far as other characters, I mean, we're talking about they might not have enough room for Flash and Green Lantern. There's been rumors that Cyborg is going to be in this, that Martian Manhunter is in it, and Aquaman. And they've even thrown out some references here and there that they might include Shazam, Green Arrow, Hawkman. Oh, God, they're just everything. I don't have a clue how they can do it. And I'll tell you three characters out of that list that I think if they're going to include any that maybe they would but I don't want to see it happen are Aquaman, Cyborg, and Martian Manhunter if they include any of them it has to only be Martian Manhunter and he has to fill the, that role that I mentioned earlier about uh, coming to Earth and kind of explaining the plot and stuff sort of like what the Justice League animated TV show did. Aquaman though there's no role for Aquaman in this movie at all he needs to be in the sequel, if anything. And Cyborg? Fuck Cyborg, as far as I'm concerned. The only reason they like Cyborg nowadays is because they needed another black person for it. And it sucks, because it's a shame that they can't just have better characters that fulfill that diversified role and can pull that off really well. Cyborg is not a Justice League member. I don't care how many times they try to cram it down into our throats how many animated movies that they incorporate him in there and shoehorn him in there and all that. I don't care if they don't have somebody of a particular uh, ethnicity or something like that in a movie. I want the characters themselves to have a purpose. And if that's the only purpose that they would include that character in there for, there's no need. Justice League War, I think, didn't need Cyborg they included plot elements to justify Cyborg, not the other way around. And they didn't need Shazam either. They could have kept it so much simpler and given some time to Barry Allen because he got screwed over in that movie. And they could have given more time to Superman who got screwed over quite a bit. They could have given a little bit more time to, um, to Wonder Woman. But... I don't know what they are thinking about, if they're going to have the, just the five core characters or if they're going to go outward. But if they go outward, who would you like to see put in the movie? I'll start with Nikki on this one. Um, again, thinking about it, I really like Cyborg. <laughs> um, <laughs> you and I are going to hate uh, this movie <laughs> or love it. It's going to be like total opposites. <laughs> As a character and as, as just like a person in general that they've added, I really, I, I really like the fact that they're adding Cyborg in. He was always one of my favorites, you know, watching King Titan and the comic books. I really enjoyed him um, as a character. And if they were to add anyone, um, I do agree with you um, over the fact that I'm not a big fan of Shazam either. Uh, I think it's just basically another Hal Jordan or another Wally stuck inside a, a different person, basically. We don't need that much... Um, uh, over animosity, over like being obnoxious and whatnot. It's just that's just too much. Uh, and Cyborg is just kind of like a happy medium, you know. What when he first becomes Cyborg, he's very serious, um, very uh, ominous, very you know like, what am I doing? Why am I like? Why did this happen to me? And eventually, he kind of he kind of um, loosens up. Uh, but. If I were to pick somebody, you know, besides the typical characters in Justice League to be in this movie, uh, I would I would want Cyborg to be in it. I I, very, I really like Cyborg. Sam? If you're going to go beyond Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, and Green Lantern, I feel like you have to include two more characters. I feel like you can only either have five or seven. Six would just seem odd to me. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, feel five or seven would be better. That Sinister Six movie is going to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be like, why was it Sinister Seven? Sinister yeah. Five. The figure some five. There you go. Yeah. But um, to include two more characters, I agree that Aquaman gets a really bad rap because of the way he's been portrayed in the past. 
But the way he's been portrayed lately, like uh, Injustice. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. That, that was amazing. Uh, that was a great take on Aquaman. But I feel like that would only be feasible in a sequel, like you said. Have Atlantis, like the Atlanteans declaring war on the surface world. That would be a great Justice League sequel. As far as the two, Martian Manhunter would be my first. And have him be the one who knows who Darkseid is. Knows that Darkseid is essentially unbeatable. But warns everybody what's going to happen. He sees that there's a Kryptonian. Maybe he knows who the Kryptonians are. Maybe he doesn't, considering Krypton is so much further away than Earth or Mars is. Um, if you're going to include a second... It's tough. Mr. Cyborg Terrific. would. Cy, <laughs> I Cyborg. Terrific. Yeah, Cyborg would work. I feel like the problem is, like you said, you can't just pick a character and then make the story fit around them. You have to tell a story that warrants the character being there. And I don't see anything based on what they're doing that warrants Cyborg. So I would probably have to go with Martian Manhunter and Shazam. Only because I don't want to see Hawkman, or Hawk Girl for that matter. I don't want to see basically one of these other like no name characters. Uh well not no name characters, but like basically if you're gonna introduce your universe to compete with Marvel, when Marvel's got some huge names now, you can't gamble on a character that not many people know. I feel like more people know who Captain Marvel is. More people know who Martian Manhunter is. But nobody's really going to know if you wanted to have a... What, what was the one? Uh, was it Dace who brought it up? Who is the character? Shit, I don't even remember now. What, when God, I mentioned um, Vixen or... Uh... Oh, yeah, that, that, that was it, Black Canary, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, don't include Black Canary. Not too many people know who she is. Green Arrow? Green Arrow... The only difference between Green Arrow and oh, Batman... Yeah. Shut up, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference between Green Arrow and Batman are the costumes and the personality. Like, they, they both don't have powers... They have similar backgrounds with being the billionaires who pose as playboys by day. Uh, I feel like putting them in, they're just too similar. Then have Green Arrow later down the line. I mean, why not? Definitely. But as an origin story, you have to have characters that are rec both recognizable and distinct enough from each other that in a film, it looks good. Dace, what are your thoughts? You said you wanted to connect the Flash TV series to that. Does that mean you want Green Arrow to pop up in this too? I, I'd be perfectly fine with it. I, I actually would prefer those two in it more so than what they're already throwing out at the board because they're established. They've got a fan base. They're building it. They're, they're popular show. Well, I assume Flash will be a popular show. If, not, if it bombs, then no, don't include them. Um, but they, they need to build it just take their time and build these characters i i don't want to watch a movie where they go they just assume that we know because once they they use that idea of let's have the audience assume that they know this person and then completely take that character and go a different pace it pisses us off i.e the mandarin in iron man 3 mm. so if you sat there and you know what the mandarin is because you read the comics going in with expectations you're expecting the mandarin and you get their version of it which in hindsight, I enjoy that version now because it's it's their play on the version. But going in with expectations of the Mandarin, I was pissed off walking out of that uh, like theater. So I don't want, yeah, I don't want to go into a movie without character build. And right now, that's the direction they're going. So you can add whoever you want, uh, Warner Brothers, but build the damn character. You can give me a cyborg. Hell, you can give me like. Captain Cold joins the freaking Justice League for whatever reason. <laughs> I'll I'll watch it if you build the character. The only thing 
in defense of Cyborg that I can think of so far, if they can figure out a way to do this without overcrowding the plot and including too many elements, if they don't go with Darkseid and they go with the OMAC project and the Brother Eye satellite and the whole idea of like, uh, you know, robots and getting giving superpowers to other people and all those other kind of stuff. I could see Cyborg playing the insider role for that. He's somebody who um, kind of played the Metallo section, I guess. They could even maybe make it so it bridged off of the Metallo project. That might be a good way to establish that. Lex Luthor creates the Metallo project for the government, and then they go and they blow it out of proportion with OMAC. But then that's the same story twice in a row. That's what I don't like about that. But if they do that, maybe in a sequel or something like that, Maybe the Omax are created to help fight off the Aquaman invasion kind of a thing. Then maybe you can give me Cyborg. But I think the difference between Nikki's point of view and mine with Cyborg is I don't like Teen Titans. And the idea of somebody who is supposed to be like a primary Teen Titan person just being bumped up to a Justice League is kind of like if the when they made that Justice League cartoon, Justice League uh, Unlimited, and that franchise, originally they weren't going to have that cast. They were going to have, um, who was it? It was uh, Robin, I think, was going to be a part of it, and a female cyborg and Kid Flash. If I remember correctly, I might be remembering that wrong, but they were going to include those characters because they were like, oh, we want some kids on the team. And it's like, to me, no, you don't do that. I don't want kids on the team. I want adults. I want the Justice League to be the Justice League. And then they can create the Teen Titans and it can create, uh, you know, Young Justice was an awesome show, I think. It had a lot of parts that were bad about it, but that was poor planning on their part and everything. But in theory, just uh, Young Justice was pretty awesome. I loved the idea that you had the teenagers working together and they were the B squad underneath the Justice League. But that's what the difference is for me. The Justice League was made out of those adults and they were like, we're not going to throw a kid in here. Like, you know, the Flash might act like a kid, but he's still a 20 something or 30 year old guy. And Cyborg, I don't know, teenager who's like a football guy or something like that, just being on the same group of people that are supposed to inspire the country and everything. I don't like it. I just, uh, it's just something I'm not a big ba- uh, fan of in the end. Same thing with uh, Shazam too. Too childish of a character, literally and figuratively. Yeah. And Aquaman, I had mentioned that before green arrow. I didn't really touch upon that, but green arrow. Um, I don't think you can tie them into the movie, uh, the movie and the TV show together. And the same kind of thing, the Sam said too similar to Batman, maybe in a third film, Maybe you do an offshoot movie where they don't really connect over, kind of like what Guardians of the Galaxy seems like it's going to be. But, I mean, I like these characters in a lot of different ways. I think Shazam can be kind of cool, and I think that Cyborg on Teen Titans is awesome, but I don't want to see him in a Justice League movie. Especially not if they do have that kind of, like, one track mind kind of thing like the the studio thing where they're like well we need a black character in here we need an asian character we need a middle eastern character we need to represent everybody here to be publicly correct and all that other kind of stuff if you're that's your only focus you're not worrying about story and that's the main thing you got to worry about story if uh you can compare it to something like an Avengers, which we're going to be doing in the next part. I don't know if he would have had the same uh, part necessarily, but to me, Cyborg doesn't seem like he would have much of a role. So without somebody arguing uh, what they're doing for a storyline first, you know, if one of the studio executives was like, here's our plan, I'm hesitant to believe it. It could be done. I could be wrong, but I'm worried about it. Last part we're going to talk about here in the next section is going to be those comparisons to the Avengers films and what we think might be coming up in the future for sequel films, solo movies, the Justice League itself, and all that other kind of stuff. Alrighty, guys. Third part here, last and final section that we're going to be talking about is something that we've referenced here and there. They were going to compare this to the plans that Marvel did through the Avengers Phase 1 
And in comparison, how the hell did DC think that this is going to work for them? Because they are not following suit. Marvel had three films basically for each character in mind. Maybe not everybody because we didn't see a second film for The Incredible Hulk. It doesn't look like we're going to see three films for The Guardians of the Galaxy. We obviously haven't seen three films from Ant-Man because we haven't even seen one of them yet. But, I mean, they set up a pretty good, solid foundation for these films. They had two Iron Man films, a Captain America one, and a Thor one, including The Incredible Hulk, to build these characters around for the first Avengers movie. And we're going to go into Justice League with what seems like Man of Steel and Superman and Batman. How unbalanced is that? And how in the hell do they think they can backtrack and create solo films out of those other characters? How do you get around the situation where you haven't built up a backstory for three of your main characters and then you're going to go do solo films? Do they just uh, over-abuse the flashback thing? Which I'm already getting tired of because Batman Begins did it well. Man of Steel... It kind of felt a little bit too much like Batman Begins to me. And even though I really love Batman Begins, and I think it's actually probably the better film out of the three, I didn't like the idea that Man of Steel did the same thing. And I really don't want to see Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Green Lantern pop up in Avengers and then just go, listen, we don't have the patience to do these ahead of time, and we don't have the money to figure it out, so why don't we just throw them in there, then we'll figure it out. And then when it comes to a solo Wonder Woman film, they go, by the way, you remember Wonder Woman from the film? Now let's do flashbacks and show you who Diana is. Now let's give you a flashback and give you the whole backstory of Barry Allen and his mother and uh, Hal Jordan. Let's go back and do that. That's a huge mistake in my book. I have no clue how they're going to pull that off. What do you think, Dace? It's tough because... I've been saying it all through this enti- our entire podcast and all the sections we've done so far. If you take the time and you build it and you make it worthwhile for the fans to invest in, then yes, it could be something great. And like you said, it's being rushed. We're going to have two films and then boom, Justice League. If you look back at like my childhood in general, there were two superheroes on the market for me. There was Batman and there was the X-Men. Because they were the market, they they were marketed to us like hell. We had the X Men '90 series, we had so many Batman versions, we had the movies, all that. They were prominent figures, and it's weird that once Marvel took the initiative to start building this universe on film, if you look at my collection now, it is so dominated by Marvel because it created that interest, it created everything to go back and look into it, and they took their time. They built Iron Man, they built Thor, they built Cap. I virtually knew nothing about these three until these movies started coming out. Then I went back and read everything I could on them. And now I'm invested going forward with Marvel. DC has has not been able to like peak that same interest for me because they don't take that time to build it. They're just looking for the cash. Christopher Nolan hit gold. That's fantastic. The Avengers did great. We can do the same thing, but they're going to rush it. So it... it if they take their time, slow down, push it back as far as you can, because I really think what they have envisioned now is just going to be a complete train wreck, and just get people on the project to care writer-wise. I think you've got a good team of actors. I think you'll lose them if you keep messing with the production and tweaking things, but you got to build. I don't think the Justice League movie should be seen until like 2018, 19, 20. Because they are not ready. If you build it, days will come. Exactly. Right <laughs> Right now, I'm going to buy popcorn, and I'm going to go sit in, like, Despicable Me 7. Whatever the hell's going, I don't know. <laughs> Even more Despicable you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what do you think about this? Uh, are they screwing themselves by doing this, or is this kind of one of those things where they're going to cut to the chase, and everybody's going to go, I didn't really care anyway, I just wanted to see Justice League. I, you know what? I don't think they're going to rush it because what I think their plan is, is they're going to have, unlike Marvel, where they established every single character and then brought them together, 
I think DC's attitude is going to be, you already know who Green Lantern is. You already know who Batman is. You already know who all these heroes are. What's cool is seeing them all together on the film. And I think what's going to spawn from the Justice League film, like a solo Wonder Woman, maybe another so- a reboot of the Green Lantern, possibly a solo Flash, is that we're not going to see their origin stories. We're going to see them in the aftermath of the Justice League with their own villains. Like, if going back to what I heard them say about Man of Steel, how the heroes already existed in the Superman universe, the world just wasn't aware of them because they were hiding. Uh, what was it? It was, um, it was one of jor speeches in the movie. Where he said, um, "Isn't your dad John a dick? <laughs> Aren't I, I the better dad for you? Come home." Yeah. Um, <laughs> where he said that uh, they will, they will st- like they will stammer behind you, they will tumble, they will fall, but in the end, they will join you in the sun, and you will help them accomplish wonders. Where each hero has their powers has their costume, has their name, but maybe they're just not out in, like, public. So, like, Batman's been doing this for a while, and he's quasi-retired. Well, maybe nobody outside of Gotham City knows who Batman is. And maybe even Gotham City. They still don't even, like, maybe it's only been, like, it was ten years ago. And they're like, yeah, we remember there was this guy they were calling Batman, but... Outside of that, we got no fucking clue who this guy is. Green Lantern? I mean, most of his stories are in space anyway. So if there is, like, the government possibly knows the Green Lantern. Like, the Flash, I mean, he's too fucking quick. You can't catch that guy on camera or anything. So maybe the characters are too afraid of what would happen if the world found out who they were. And now that Superman is... Not only does the world know who he is, but some of them even see him as the savior of what happened. That they, they, like Jor-El said, they will join you in the sun. Now that he is a face, now they can stand behind him. And together they can do the wonders that neither, that none of them could individually. So I think, don't give us their origin stories maybe talk about it in the past like you don't just have to assume everybody knows who they are i wouldn't do it in flashbacks though i would just maybe like just bits of information scattered throughout the film about who they were and then after the justice league give me a story of green lantern going into space and fighting sinestro give me a story of flash after the justice league i mean the flash is shitty villains anyway so just give me fucking reverse flash or fucking Captain Boomerang. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, that, are, do you kind of see where I'm going with that? Like, do you agree, disagree? I think that there's some flaws with it, but I kind of – I see what you're, what you're talking about. Yeah. I still think they end up have to – they end up having to um, do some flashbacks eventually because when – if you introduce a character like Flash – in the Justice League movie, and it's like, oh, Flash is a Flash. And then when we have a sequel movie where it's just the Flash, and you go into the movie, and it's like, well, the Flash is a Flash, people will be like, well, how did they become a Flash? Yeah. And then you have to do a flashback, which is kind of funny that you would say that. <laughs> call, it, flashback call it Flashback. Flash. Right, Flash, colon, back. <laughs> like the most <laughs> underwhelming title of all time. <laughs> What do you think, Nikki? Is that uh, well, I know I already know what you're gonna say. You're gonna be like, "That's not the best title of all time." We talk about. I disagree with you, Tony. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, do you think that this is a good plan, or do you think this is gonna backfire on them? Flash backfire on them? Um, I I think it's pretty okay. I mean, there are um not everything I uh totally agree with, but the main thing I do understand and see also that could also happen is basically, you know. Oh, Batman, Superman, Wonder, Wonder Woman, uh, The Flash, Green Lantern, such and such, all in the same movie. Like, we don't know much about them, but we know who they are, and they're all going to be in a movie. So, you know, 
we can basically throw out whatever we want and people are going to eat it up and they're going to they're going to watch it no matter what um with the case of everybody uh like us in the discussion that's not going to be uh what's expected you know it's going to it's that does happen, it's going to completely backfire with many people who are like very sure fire into, um, into the comic books and the movie and whatnot and want it to be accurate no matter what. But there are people who go to the movies not knowing a single fucking thing about them and they're going to love whatever's thrown at them. So hopefully, uh, I just want them to keep, even if they change some things, like, like what was mentioned with Iron Man and the Mandarin, even if they change some things, as long as you keep it logical. And it not being not it like it doesn't contradict anything else in the story. I'm gonna be okay as long as it's not a stupid ass plan. <laughs> um, but I mean, as long as it's not just making a movie for the sake of all of these well known characters that everybody knows um, to be put into it for the sake of money, uh, and it just be a completely shitty storyline, then I think I'm gonna be okay for the most part. One other question I wanted to say before we finish this off. Where do you guys think this is going to go in the future? How do you end the Justice League films? Marvel has already said that they've got... I mean, they told you right off the bat they're doing at least three. And they haven't really said it officially, but they have mentioned that they would want the Avengers to continue. Maybe they'll do the new Avengers. Maybe they'll have the East coast or whatever like that, you know, different versions of the Avengers, maybe the defenders on TV, lots of different stuff like that. So they're going to keep building. What do you do with justice league though? Do you just do three movies and end it? Do you kill the characters off? Do you reboot the universe afterward? What do you, what would you like to say as the end point of this days? I, I think would be awesome. Is at the end of this justice league movie, Bob Iger walks out and he goes, Walt Disney has just purchased DC. We're going to start with a blank slate. Uh, forgive us for everything that's happened in the past. He comes out like uh, <laughs> Sam Jackson in Iron Man. Yes. With an eye- we're the only people that Disney owns. <laughs> with, with an eye patch to say, you're now going to be in a good family. And like George Lucas is next to him and Stanley. <laughs> and Mickey that, Mouse. Yeah, and Mickey Mouse. <laughs> 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 Other than that, maybe a bomb. It kills them all. I don't know. I'm just really not impressed with the, their cinematic universe. I'm impressed with their TV shows, but movies have been falling flat on me. So you don't want to tie it back to Field of Dreams and have it end with, it turns out that the Justice League is on the edge of the universe, and on the other edge of the universe is, like, where all the dead people are, and they just play baseball? I, I'd be cool if, like, uh, the hell's his name? Kevin Costner comes back and... They end up doing some kind of reference to that. Christopher Reeves walks out, or comes out on a horse, riding <laughs> valiantly. No, uh, <laughs> Jesus. The, the one Superman from the alternate universe just wakes up and goes, oh, it's just a dream. And we could just literally play it off that it was just a dream. <laughs> Sam, how should this end? Uh, with Adam West waking up and it was all his wild and crazy <laughs> dreams. Wakes Adam, up in Quahog. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say Adam West as Batman or Adam West as Adam West. <laughs> That's uh, a TV show uh, that I did. I think, I think it's too early to see where they're gonna end this. I mean, we only have one film in what's expected to be an entire franchise. But where could they end it? I don't see them pulling an Avengers where they've already stated, like you said, that once the third Avengers is done, like there could be a new Captain America. There could be um, all these little side characters that like aren't huge right now. They could start reinventing and bringing them out. I don't really see DC doing that. They're, They're taking a real gamble with and I went on with what they could do with having this Justice League movie and then splintering off but backtracking a little bit it's still a gamble to do that and I think if they're going to roll the dice and see if this is going to work they really can afford to once their main heroes are done play with their unknown heroes 
I, I just I don't see it. I, I see this as ending in a really cool attempt on their part and maybe something that once we have kids, we be like, hey, there was this really great try at a <laughs> cinematic universe. But I, I see them probably in the next 15, 20 years just rebooting it again. Nikki? Um, I honestly don't really want to see it rebooted. Um, unlike bigger things like with Marvel, such as the Avengers, you can do a little more with the Avengers simply because, one, there's more characters, obviously. Like they're doing with, you know, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor. They bring them all together. And then the next phase comes out. New movies, then they all come together again, come together again. Can't really do that with a lot of DC characters besides Batman, really. Um, nobody's going to watch three Wonder Woman movies in a row. You know, they're starting out with Superman, bringing Superman and Batman in together, correlating with each other. But other than that, I mean, what are you going to do with three Shazam movies or three Flash movies? I mean, it, it's going to be a little weirder to do simply because the characters aren't strong enough. So you can only reboot something so many times. Um, do I think that these, uh, the Justice movie, uh, Justice League movies are going to be weak? Not at all. You know, um, just coming out, I think it has a lot of potential. But watching the second or third rebooted Justice League series is going to be a little boring for me. Um, and I don't think it would do, do so well for it to be rebooted multiple times. And they're probably going to try anyway. <laughs> but um, for me, I really hope that if it is really good, they just keep it there. And, you know, maybe they can fucking reboot Batman or Superman or something again. Because, like I said, they're probably going to no matter what. But I just prefer to it be maybe like a three movie series and then call it quits for this. So, um, uh, but you never know. We'll see. It's whatever. If I can interject one more thing, actually, that I think would be cool. You can interject five more things if you have them. Sweet. <laughs> uh, I, if they do, like I had said, and they do reboot after all of this, I think an interesting way to do it, it would have to be a film version. I, I wouldn't want to see the comics come to life on film. They would have to make it their own. But kind of do a flashpoint where after the end of all the cinematic universe, once it starts coming to a close, if you want to reboot it, have a flashpoint like thing where the entire universe is kind of like the, the slate is swiped clean. And now you can tell all these stories over again because of some sort of paradox that was created. Do like um, Crisis on Infinite Earths. But kind of. in the style of what we think, I don't know, we, there's no confirmation yet, but what we think that Days of Future Past is going to be? Something like that, yeah. I can see that happen. Days I have a pretty simple answer when it comes to this. I don't know. I have no idea how they end this. And yeah. you go back to my thing I said before where it was, you know, try to plan out what would you do and how I wouldn't have started off with... Uh, Man of Steel acting the way that it did, and I wouldn't do Superman, Batman, and I wouldn't not have the solo films and all that. Even if I were given the choice of doing solo films, I still don't know how I would end it, because I don't know how I want Avengers to end. I know I want Avengers 3 to end with them beating Thanos, but I have no idea whatsoever for Justice League. And that's going to be part of the fun, I think. Unless they keep lowering their standards and everything, because I was disappointed with Man of Steel, and if all we ever get is something equal or worse than Man of Steel, I'm going to lose it. But if they give me what they are hoping that they'll give me, and that's like everything that I would want as a Batman, Superman, Justice League, DC character fan, I don't even know. But... Hey, for anybody listening out there, if you have any pitches for anything like that, go ahead and leave us a comment. Tell us what you think that they should do for the future. And you know what? The other parts as well. Tell us what you guys think about all the stuff that we talked about for this episode. And the last thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to go around one more time, some quick plugs to throw out there, and then that'll be it. So 
I'm going to go in reverse mode here. Nikki, is there anything that you want to plug or throw out there for a mention or anything of the sort? Um, uh, just getting back into the swing of things uh, after school and holidays and not having a laptop, um, how you know, everything's starting to come and wind back down. I'll have more time for Fanboys Anonymous. Um, uh, you'll see me every Wednesday on the Dance Man Show. Uh, you can follow me on Tumblr. It's voteforsatan.tumblr.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter. It's underscore and Mills. Um, I've actually had people message me uh, and ask me what my Twitter name was, thinking that it was a fucking hyphen. It's not a hyphen. It's an underscore. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, but, but that's really about it. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to uh, make my appearance uh, a little more prevalent than it has been in the last couple of months. The one with the hyphen is Doppelganger Nikki. <laughs> yeah. One of the other Infinite Earths. <laughs> Sam, you're up. Uh, well, I'll like Nikki said, I'll try to be a little more prevalent uh, with articles on fanboysanonymous.com, but I need to get the fuck out of college, so I need to really focus on that first. Uh, but you can definitely check me out on Tumblr. Uh, science101blog.tumblr.com I'm starting up the Science 101 channel after I graduate so in a few months there'll be more information on that I've already got a, a good follower base on both Tumblr and Facebook so do you love science as much as I do definitely check it out and the Ace Man Hey, check me out every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, on Mega Powers Radio, The Dace Man Show. Follow me on Twitter at The Dace Man. Check out everything I'm doing on fanboysanonymous.com, such as the 2014 Internet Goddess Tournament and our successful charity that happened over the weekend also went down, so we're always doing new things there. And that's about all I got. Alrighty, guys. Keep checking out everything with Fanboys Anonymous. The Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr... Instagram, YouTube channel, iTunes, Stitcher. God knows, we're going to make something of everything. We're going to make it a Zanga account. Why not? A new <laughs> flap. Right. <Yeah>. Friendster. <laughs> we're going to go back in time. I'll set us up a account on Match.com. Yeah, why not? For <laughs> the, the fangirls anonymous out there. <laughs> but we're going to be doing so much more stuff. I mean, every single week we've got new stuff that we're bringing out there for fanboys. Eventually, we're going to be debuting a brand new style segment of the podcast called Commentary Fan Tracks, where we're going to do pretty much what you would expect to hear from that. We're going to watch something together. We're going to record our fan commentary instead of the people that worked on the movies, because who cares what they think about this kind of stuff? You want to hear what fans think about it. And it's not going to be in the style of a riff tracks kind of thing, where we just make fun of stuff. We're not going to watch stuff that we can just make fun of. We're going to watch things that we love, that we're fanboys of. And we're going to get lots of other kind of stuff and, uh, segments out there as well, including fanboy fights. We're going to start doing everything with uh, different features that are already on the website, debuting new members to the team that are going to bring new stuff on board. I just I can't list everything because obviously that'll take forever, but Stay tuned to everything with Fanboys Anonymous by going to fanboysanonymous.com and checking out all those other kind of social media things that we have going on. Our next group meeting may be in this month as well. We may do two group meetings this month instead of just one. If we do, you'll be hearing very, very soon from us. If not, stay tuned for episode three whenever it comes out. Thank you, everybody, for listening and for your comments and everything else that you've done in regards to the show. This meeting is adjourned.